We are on the streets of Greenville now talking about public safety, not just law enforcement, right? Right. It's public safety. Sergeant Ken Hadnoff from the police department. How are you, sir? Good, sir. Good to see you, Mr. Holly. Appreciate you coming back out on the street. I'm Steve. You know that. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, there's a, I, in talking to the chief, he's always talking about data-driven policing and, and how it relates to community-oriented policing. And he mentioned that we might want to talk to you about the traffic safety initiatives that you guys have. How does this traffic safety initiative fit into data-driven policing? Um, we're taking, well, we have a cr problem with crashes in Greenville. For the population in the city, um, crashes are steadily going up each year. Mm -hmm. um, so we started taking a look at the analysis from data. Um, we used the um, DOT um, website for getting data for crashes, and we're using our own um, department data to, uh, and analyze the crashes, and we've determined top 10 intersections are the, the highest concentration of crashes are occurring. Now, so, are you noticing a, a, a correlation between number of speeders and number of crashes in certain areas? Yes, um, speed and inattention of drivers um, is the biggest correlation mm -hmm. uh, in all these intersections. Um, there's probably out of the top 10, you could go into the top 15 and they're, they're within close proximity of each other, but in the top 10, we just chose to do 10. But in all those intersections, even if it was in the top 15, speed and inattention seems to be the um, highest driven um, cause for crashes. So what are you guys gonna do about this? Um, we're taking that data, like I said, and we analyzed it. In 2011, there were 5,100 crashes, a little over 5,100. 5,100? Yes. And That's then, huge. And then in 2012, um, um, which I just came into the unit in December, so I did the analysis for it. Um, Sergeant Bruinson retired, and I took his place, and so he showed me the, um, the websites and stuff where to get this data. And when I analyzed the data from 2012, there were 5,300, it had gone up by 200 crashes in just one year. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I never so thought that there'd be that be. Let's try and break it down. I gotta get math skills out. I can't even say how many that is a day. On uh, true, and it depends. It kind of, and that's, what, that's one of the things that from the data, it tells you what the peak months are. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems to be from a right about August through probably about April is the peak months. And then there's a, a small percentage drop between May in August, uh, but it's very small. And it's pretty much, like you say, this crashes during 2012 are staying steady each month with the percentages. That's just nuts. Now I noticed you got this uh, new radar machine behind us. Uh, what are you guys doing with this? I've seen these on the roads now. Well, um, part of our initiative is we want to educate the public and have voluntary compliance. Um, and this is helping to educate the public the speed limit's 35 here on Arlington, and we have it set to flash when you're going above the speed limit of 35. And we're trying to educate and get voluntary compliance from the public to slow down. Because speed coming up to these um, intersections with traffic backing up at peak times of the day, and you know, if you look off to the side, next thing you know, somebody stopped in front of you. So we're trying to educate the public to slow down because if you can reduce your speeds, you can reduce the rear end collisions that are occurring. Now, for folks who don't want to follow that, how are you going to know? I mean, you just leave this thing up here, you, you'll never know. I mean, who's coming by here you know, how fast they're going? Right. Well, we have a, um, a little small computer that's attached to this, and the data is captured during the day while this is up, and it tells me the peak times, it tells me the highest speed, the lowest speed, and it gives me the median speed of what is coming through on Arlington here. So um, from that, um, if we don't get the voluntary compliance, um, they'll be meeting some of my guys that work in the motor unit. Well, you know, we were setting up for this a second ago, and we had one of the guys on his motorcycle. I uh, was just kind of showing us how he works his radar, and all of a sudden something popped up, and he said, uh, excuse me for a moment. <laughs> Boom, gone. Yes, sir, and that's, like, that's even with the, the radar trailer sitting out here. So, like I say, um, this is not a citation-driven. Um, we're not trying to, you know, write tickets. It's not data-driven for tickets at all. This is merely to reduce crashes and injuries that are occurring. Um, and to get voluntary compliance, but you know, the set, another portion of it is the enforcement of the law for the speed. I imagine this should probably be a pretty good warning to folks when you're looking for that voluntary compliance. If enough folks are coming by here speeding and not maybe just one or two miles an hour, but if you're seeing a lot of 10 and 15 miles an hour, you guys are gonna be out. Oh yes, sir. Because obviously people aren't paying attention. That's exactly right. And that's, again, again, inattention to what's going on on the road, speeds, um, and you know, conditions of traffic. Um, I mean, everybody knows in Greenville, 
um, Arlington and Greenville Boulevard at certain times of the day, there's just heavy congestion and speed and inattention. And next thing you know, with all that heavy congestion of traffic, you know, you're involved in a collision. Well, hopefully we can reduce the, reduce the number of people who are not voluntary, voluntarily complying. My tongue took a vacation this weekend. <laughs> and uh, hopefully increase our public safety. Yes, sir, most right. definitely. Is and this is also um, rolls into the public safety, not only with motorists, but the pedestrians. We, um, during that 2012 stretch there, there was also an increase in pedestrian crashes and um, people crossing the streets and um, also using um, bicycles. So um, this initiative, you know, covers that, but also um, it goes into hotspot policing because uh, people that are going to violate also traffic laws or uh, violating, you know, burglaries, they're doing criminal offenses such as burglaries and stuff like that. And the, the data drives us into these areas also and we can use traffic enforcement to help with that because I tell the guys on their motor unit, you know, all these people that are breaking into some of these places and stealing TVs, they're not, you don't see them walking around on their back with TVs and stuff, so they're having to get there by car. So this is another way to reduce crime. And chances are those folks aren't doing the speed limit to get away. They want to get away as fast as they can. Yes, sir. Exactly. Because okay. I didn't want to let you think, I didn't want people to think that you were implying that all speeders are doing breaking and entering. Oh, no, sir. Not okay. at all. It's just another tool um, towards crime and traffic safety. Okay. We love as many tools as we can to get them, again, voluntarily compliance. Yes, sir. I guess you could almost say the sign itself is uh, voluntary compliance. This is the warning and then the guys over my shoulder, they're really going to be the, the, the teeth to this. Yes, sir. That's correct. All right. Is there a phone number people can call for more information about this kind of stuff? Yes, sir. Um, they can call my office phone number and that's 252-329-4597. Sergeant, thank you very much. Yes, sir. I appreciate it.